two and one. According to this, Mr. Jabba 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 do, we are live. We are live. We are live. So, welcome, we are folks. Live. Now, rumor has it this is like how to type episode 16. I don't actually believe that for a second. I don't. Because who knows what it is. Because we took the format of the Patreon private how to type stream, and now we're making it available to all of you folks. That's right. That's what we're doing. Yeah, we the and then what we did is to for the private uh, uh, how to type stream on Patreon, we made that the fictional typing stream. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jeb, but I don't think I am. I think we made that like available for, I think it's silver tier now. And because it's silver tier, that means like lots of people could show up now to uh, that stream, yeah. that private stream, where uh, you're basically going to be a badass. And uh, I mean, uh, who are you hoping we're going to be typing next on the fictional stream? What do you think? What do you think, Jab? Well, who are you hoping for? Mm. I mean, I'm guessing. I'm hoping for I'm Gundam guessing pilots we... personally. <laughs> I'm hoping for sets that have say or 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 uh, Sumeragili Noriega <laughs> from uh, from Gundam Zero uh. Zero. You know what I'm saying? Oh, double O, Gundam See, double is, O, because you're not a true fan unless you say Gundam double O. Thank you, Lin Yen Chen. See, See, the thing is, I don't think we're going to be typing any Gundam uh, characters unless Lin Yen Chin's there, so... Yeah, it's true. I mean, he failed us miserably <laughs> last time. Absolute <laughs> failure, you know. Of course, he's going to be like, ow, oh, you have to type Amaro Ray first, guys. That one. You got to type Amaro Ray first, because if you don't, I mean... There's just no point. And to which I'm like, I see your Amaro Ray, bro, but I'm going to raise you a, a Char. That's right. That's right. That's what, that's what is I'm Amaro, I'm pretty sure Amaro Ra is an INTP ENTJ relationship. I, I have no, I have no clue. I'm, I'm not that cool. I, the uh, giant robot lives <laughs> is not strong with this one. Uh, uh-huh. I, 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 to be honest, I really enjoyed Get Him Wing. I enjoyed Gundam Double O, and I really enjoyed Iron Blooded Orphans. But outside of that, uh-huh. I'm probably not a true a... Gundam believer. You you weren't a fan of Gundam uh, IN? Sorry, no. INF? No, no, I was not. <laughs> I was not a true fan. Every they, where they mix where every character and, is an and, NF. Yeah, where every, where every character is literally an idealist. No. <laughs> Like, no, there's not. only one pragmatic character, and he's, like, the villain? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, all right, who are we typing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the new format, folks. We got a new format for you tonight. We're going to type a lot of people. We're going to do, like, uh, it's kind of like speed dating except speed typing. You know what I'm saying? Except this time... We will make it available to the audience, right? If you give us super chat, we type the super chat, right? Or we uh, we just type what the audience asks, right? So that's yeah. right, folks. You decide who we are typing tonight. That means no planning, no uh, not that we planned anything before. It's mostly just jab choosing what it was for the night, and I just went with it. But yeah, at this point in time, folks. You guys, as the audience, get to choose who we're typing this evening. And there will be multiple choices because we're going to nail multiple people. Let's see how many people we get handled in 60 minutes, if you know what I'm saying. You know, besides, yeah. you know, I mean, like, I like the Elder Wand, and it's pretty cool because, like, Gellert Grindelwald is an ENTP like me, and it's pretty dope. But, uh, you know, the next prop I want to get, I want a real, you know what I'm saying, Jab? I want one of those uh, <laughs> lifetime copy or life-size copy or uh or what is it a replica of a uh, frostmorn you know that way i could just be like randomly on the stream you know frostmorn hungers and whatnot you know what i'm saying there's nothing more entp than that so because arthas is mm-hmm. super pragmatic and very movement so right and he seems extroverted to me and so that would make arthas a starter type but he seems you know I, oh oh maybe we should type arthas Did you knock your microphone yeah, I knock, I, I knock it around every now and then, you know? Maybe we should type Arthas on the next uh, uh, fictional typing stream. I, I think that would be really dope. Right, let, let's see who Alalia is. Oh. Nina Willio. Alalia. I have no idea. 
No, I American both. Singer apparently had something to do with R. Kelly, according to my Google search. The Google search wins every time for some reason. I have no idea why. Ooh, I need to stop hitting that mic. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to put the wand away. And instead, I'm going to pull out the red marker. The first marker is the red marker, always. We already did Joe Rogan. Right. Joe Rogan is an ESTP. Check out episode two of this season, which is the Elon Musk episode. Right. We got Joe Rogan in the same episode. Check that out. We basically typed Elon Musk from the Joe Rogan podcast. Yep. So we did Joe Rogan at the same time on the sly. Joe Rogan has already been done, people. Don't even ask. Sorry. Next. Oh, okay. So I got my clips. I got my clips of this lady ready. All um, right. Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah, I, I'm thinking we set it to a five dollar minimum for typing because we're probably only going to type four people per episode. So if we get four super chats, it's only twenty dollars for a stream. So yeah, I don't exactly. Think I don't know, Jab. I think you're pretty coin operated. You could probably double that price. Just saying. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We'll honor the first couple of super chats, anyhow. All right, let's do this, Aaliyah person. Yep. Oh, wax as well. Because they're going to talk about how there are singers who are funny. Wow, the the audio on that is cancer. Like I, that's pretty cancer. Do we have something better? Yeah, like someone's interviewing from the bathroom through the door, and she's like trying to answer the question. I know. Wow, like... she's literally taking a dump. I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And while she's taking a dump, she's also like lathering her neck and uh, her nose with the uh, Vicks Vapor Rub. For some reason, I got all of that, you know, in that uh, small sm sound bite. For some reason. All right, let's see if we can hear it now. I skipped a few minutes in. Here's Bob. Mm -hmm. Did you do you remember the first time you really? Oh first... my god, this is terrible. I'm going next. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's throw that in the dumpster. Uh, I don't know. You got some Oprah Winfrey or something, or maybe some Ellen or. Uh, I don't know. CBS. So I think CBS has at least uh, Katie Couric. I, I, I imagine if someone from CBS is going to interview her, like at least he's going to take a microphone with him into the toilet when he asks questions. So let's check out this interview. Hurt your feelings. They too. will. They They'll can be you. pretty ugly. See, they sit up there and they just write, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't know that it's your mm -hmm. life. That mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. They don't. They forget that. But when it's good, you it's should, really you should good. bathe in the it's good ones. Really totally. Good. You ready? Yeah. Like this? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you and so good much. to see you. Good to see you as well. Wow. Very responding. What's it like being in a movie? Thank you think mm -hmm. responding, huh? All right. Put that up for you. Ooh, wait a minute. I did initiating twice. Oh, yeah. This is actually responding. My bad. Ooh, as I write with my. Oh, uh, so Do I need to turn this up? You need to turn it up, yeah. Loud. I can't hear anything. Yeah. The cancerous sound right. continues. I guess it's just uh, uh, silent clips. I can turn them up, though. Yep. Can, uh, Jab uh, says one for responding, yeah. folks. But does no one agree with that? That's fine. Keep going. Let's find out. It's a year's work finally coming to fruition, and, and it's successful. It's just it's the best feeling in the world. But you're not a person that's been in a thousand movies. No, You've been in one. one. <laughs> <laughs> and the words that they're saying from the tippy top of the mountains, yeah. impressive debut. What's that like? It's amazing. It really is. When I went to shoot the film, I was very nervous. I kept telling myself, this is it. This is what you've wanted. This is the real deal. Now you've got you to gotta do your thing. you got to put all of you in this. And, and people to say it's impressive. So natural. I mean, it's the best feeling in the world. I feel like all the hard work, you know, it paid off. How'd you figure it out? This acting thing? <sighs> it's something I've wanted for a very, very long time. Since I was little, I started in singing. I did acting. I danced. I did plays. In high school, I took a bit of drama, but music was first. And I waited for the right project for the right time. And it just came together. But the thing about it is, you have to act with someone. Mm -hmm. You can't sit in your room getting better and better every day. <laughs> you know, react with someone. First time on the set, and you pulled it off. Thank you. You know, I was actually just blessed to be... I gotta say, she seems super responding to me. 
she yeah. hasn't initiated. She's not really initiated much. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep it up. Let's keep going. I cut her off in the middle of a sentence. How Got right some now. directness in there. Mm -hmm. Even though we have a point for so, she made an informative statement. But, uh, and people that I had great chemistry with and that were just open to me. I mean, Delroy pulled me to the side and said, you know, here, I'm going to give you a few pointers. Getting a lot of time. Say, uh, you know, I'm talking about and playing off in that way, you know, these people valued me in this way. That's a TIFE statement. So go well, for that. Well, the TIFE in the sense of that, you know, people, I think I'm just about to repeat what you just said, but like, She's talking about other people's extroverted thinking, how it interacted with her, other people's T E F I and how it projected. Yeah, onto they her. were they were projecting yeah. their labels on her, exactly. Yeah. I'm definitely seeing some T I F E on this one. Let's see. People that great it was great for me. You know, this is a movie that could be called uh, on first blush, a, an R and D type gang movie, mm -hmm. but it's different. It's you drive bad. a Mercedes in the movie. Oh, I'm pushing the verse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pushing the verse. It's cute, but um, no, it's not that. It's it's got something for everybody. I mean, we have some. It's it's we've got an influence of hip hop in there. Was that another instance of uh, TIFE? Because he talks about the Mercedes as a a symbol of status, and he projects that onto her. She responds positively to that. Yeah, uh, that's true. Um, yeah, I'll let that one go for that, for sure. Good catch. Yeah, the soundtrack is, has a lot of hip-hop on it, but we've got a lot of great artists. We've got um, a wonderful score, and the movie just has so many different colors, so many different elements, so it's not just a hip-hop movie. It's, it's just a great movie. I don't want to label it as one thing. Yeah. Talking about how the colors affect her and the experience she received from... Yep. Colors and how it's very important. Yep, and seems concrete a bit. Right. We'll, we'll see if she uh, raises any abstract points. Thing, you, know? you know, sometimes you sit there and you work for months and stuff comes out that ain't that good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you see movies and you go, didn't they watch this before they put right. it out? Could, did you have a feeling as you were going along that it was part of so something special was I going on? I felt it was something very special. I mean, what? just the set in itself. Andre, it's his debut as a director, and he does a beautiful job, and he set the tone for the whole set. Everybody just got along. There was just this wonderful camaraderie. And That's an S-E and I statement right there. That's for sure. That's for sure. I saw some uh, Talk FIT. About some other people. Say again. I thought I saw some uh, FIT there as well. Yeah, with, with what? With what? Lay it on me. Well, she talked about how the experience made her feel. Mm. The emotional response is elicited. Oh, let's back up again and listen to no, that again. Yeah, let's back up. Uh, back up 10 seconds. I felt it was something very special. I'm feeling as you were going along that it was part of so something special was I going on. I felt it was something very special. I mean, what? just the yeah, set in itself. When people say special, though, that, like, the people that say special more than anything are, are basically high, uh, F.E. optimistic people because they want to feel special. Uh, or, uh, or even like, even like Effie Parent wants to feel special. It's all about being special. You know what I'm saying? So whenever I hear the label special, it's kind of usually more of an Effie thing because it's Effie users that are like, well, I want to feel special or I want to make this person feel special, etc. It's all about special. You know what I'm saying? Uh, of course, who doesn't want to feel special? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I, I want to feel special too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think I think all of y'all, uh, I think everybody here wants to feel special. I mean, you know, like you gotta, gotta, gotta get that special treatment going. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I yeah, I'm still gonna have to lean on the TIFE on that one for sure. Definitely. Okay. Not, I'm not solid on her uh, perception functions, but we'll have to get to another interview in a different context, but let's continue. As a director, and he does a beautiful job, and he set the tone for the whole set. Everybody just got along. There was just this wonderful camaraderie, and I mean, as time went on and we watched dailies, you could just see this, this these sparks happening, and, and it was just it was just a beautiful project on yeah, set and off. Um, so as no and I to me with all of that, what she's saying, very physics oriented, talking about the experience of the other people on the team, etc. That's kind of where I'm coming from. So let's 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 continue. Right. Singer, actress. Yeah. 
How are they the same? Well, they're different in a lot of ways, but there are similarities. Getting in front of a camera, you know, being on stage, there's acting involved in that. But being an actor, you become this new person. You become this totally different person. And even though you may be able to relate to this character, you still have to be someone else and get people to get into that with you. So, um, concrete. I think concrete. the discipline. And yeah, I was about to say, if there's ever an opportunity to make an abstract statement, yeah, it would be irresponsible. Exactly. And she just concrete she is so concrete. Yeah. For sure. Kind of want to say pragmatic, but I, I think we'd have to get another interview. Let's keep going. Okay. Involved and the focus is the same, but they're still totally different genres. So you reading any of these reviews? I haven't read any yet. I've heard a lot. And <laughs> Why I'm haven't very, you read them? I, I told myself I was going to stay away from the reviews. I didn't know what people were going to think, and um, I wanted to protect myself. Yeah. But now I think I'm going to read a few. <laughs> like you told me, bathe in, yeah, bathe in, the, good bathe in the good reviews. So I'm very happy with what people are saying. Let's talk a little bit of history, because you've been involved with movies before, with your singing, yes. Dr. Doolittle, yeah. a Grammy-nominated song on the soundtrack. Tell me about the song and being part of that movie. Um, you know, I love Eddie Murphy. So I wanted to do a song on the soundtrack and um, that song just, it really shocked me. I, when I first recorded it, I felt it was a hit. I loved it, but I didn't know it was going to do what it did. So to have it become a Grammy nominated song with such a great video, that was one of the most played videos on MTV. It was just, it was great. It was one of, a highlight of my career, definitely. In a movie I've seen over and over with my daughter, Anna. She's pretty integrated. Seems to be more shadow focused though. Yeah, potentially. I mean, she. It kind of gets to the point where she's like cognitive transitions for the sake of the interview. Let's go to a different interview entirely. Let's uh, let's uh, take her out of this context and try to uh, do a comparative analysis and see if we can uh, identify cognitive transition. Heard all of your music, and I didn't realize how young you are. Is that too quiet? And I didn't realize that that was you last night until, you know, I read the notes. Loud to me. First movie. This is my first movie. How exciting is that? Oh, it's extremely exciting. This is something I've wanted for so long, and for it to finally come to fruition is just it's amazing. Mm. But rank it up there with all the other stuff. I mean, haven't you gotten just a little bit jaded now? No, I, I, I can't. What was the most thrilling thing that happened to you before this movie? In my career, I want to highlight the Oscars when I performed at the Academy Awards. That was absolutely incredible. Great. I'm sure. There's Robert De Niro. I mean, it seems interest based, else. definitely. Definitely interest that like the way she's reacting to, you know, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about this? And then it's just your movie. It's a song with Eddie Mur Murphy, etc. Uh, it's all about like, you know, who's interested. She's not once really talked about any system or anything she's following. So that's right, folks. She's not an SJ. Okay, stop with the SJ-ness. Uh, and she's definitely not a uh, an intellectual. So we're dealing with an artisan or a uh, an idealist at this point. So let's uh, let's keep moving forward on that. Definitely concrete, definitely interest based. So we just need to determine if she is an artisan or a uh, uh, an idealist. Let's keep going. I'm thinking artisan. She hasn't really been saying much about doing the right thing or being people oriented. Let's keep going. Before we go forward, I just want to raise a point. I think that she's an artisan on the fact that her introverted sensing seems to be either in the nemesis or the critics slot based on right she seems to feel comfortable in these interviews and right. she like talks for like she's a mouse and she kind of reminds me of, of kind of like um perhaps a, a, a small child being spoken to by an adult that they've never met before and you know that you know they speak exactly and that, to me, suggests that, that the introverted sensing is probably in... I'm also not uh, seeing uh, movement, either. And she hasn't been really direct, you know. Right. Very, she seems very controlled. Yeah. But Definitely on the control. I, I, I would wager her introverted sensing is in the nemesis or critic slot. All right. Fair enough. That's fair enough. We could be So we could be dealing with an SFP. Uh, okay. Yep. I agree. Let's keep. Let's uh, let's listen to some more. All right. 
<laughs> one day. <laughs> this this film is Romeo and Juliet, opera, Shakespeare, obviously, mm -hmm. hip hop, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even got football. I mean, this is it's such a combination of stuff. Don't don't you think that people out there are just going to have a hard time staying in their seats? I did. In a good way. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, I had a hard time I mean, being still. F-I-T-E, in a good way. I think it's cool because Well, and that's also a bit of S E N I, isn't it? Like the experience you have in the audience. That's true. That's true. Yep, about the performance, for sure. You're always interested. You don't know what's coming next. And like you said, it touches on Romeo and Juliet a bit, but it's its own story at the same time. It's got so many different colors and we've got comedy. S -E -N -I. Comedy. S -E -N -I. And then and that story is a pragmatic statement. Um, she's still control for sure. Informative. Yep, that was also informative. She's not actually. It's like she's kind of like dancing around the bush a little bit, but interviewing well right. in that regard. So, based on what evidence we have so far, folks, SFP NTJ, and uh, she is definitely oh, control. So. And uh, pragmatic, concrete interest, which would make her an artisan. So, by process of elimination, Jab, she's an ISFP. Was that the only one we were missing? That is the only one we've been missing. We have an Ooh, ISFP in our see. hands. Nice. So, thank you. Was, thank you, audience, for giving us a uh, an ISFP to type. That was the only one we were missing. Now we have each of the 16 types represented upon these... Uh, had a type stream, so good call on that one. Fire up the next somebody one, Jeb. Called, somebody called Peter Wiggett, uh, donated two dollars and said Dario Nahara, so I'm gonna queue up uh, videos from Dario Nadi. <laughs> <laughs> Dario Nahara uh, is a fictional character, not a regular character, so we will not be doing him tonight. And remember, folks. We only have limited slots and of time to be able to get in. So once super chats are in, they're in. But uh, just be aware of that. Uh, fictional characters are saved for the Patreon fictional typing uh, stream. So don't forget uh, that one. Uh, next, so um, community and the other two are interested. Elizabeth Holmes. She donated five dollars. Yeah, that. let's do Elizabeth Holmes. I don't even know who she is. Let's do it. I never even. I didn't even know that person existed. So, there are CEO Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> yeah! Lately, one of the most ex and much also has. Uh, here we go. This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. And um, I, I have to say, I, I, I personally was shocked to see that the journal would publish something like this when we had sent them over a thousand pages of documentation demonstrating that the statements in their piece were false, but um, what we're doing things yeah. different. It's and also FITE as well. That's definitely FITE. That's also affiliative. So she's TEing out that document, etc. Well, it's not only that, but she seems to talk about how she feels like she's being. It's it's double affiliative because first she talks about like how she feels like some injustice has been imparted on her by people fighting her and da 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 da. And then she gives that analogy or story or parable or whatever you call it of, you know, first they fight you, then they doubt and then the, the, and then you change the world. So then on top of that, she's talking about wanting to change the world. So right. I would argue double affiliative, but I'd completely respect it if you only put one tick for affiliative there. All right. All right, let's keep going. And, and that's okay. Yeah, but... In this case, it was pretty disappointing to see that after every single one of the sources that we spoke with, who the journal had contacted, told us that the statements that were being attributed to them were false or misleading, and the only sources who were left were ones who wouldn't speak with us, who on their own website say that they now do business with LabCorp in their office, or in the other case, 
demanded in writing that we pay them in cash up front $2,500 for an hour to talk to them about their statements did, to the journal. Did the journal those know things what were you referenced. just said? Did the journal know everything that you just said before they wrote the article? Uh, of, of course, absolutely. Okay. Uh, at the same time, pretty negative article, so let me ask you, you I know that you've talked to us about your partnership with Walgreens, one of the best uh, retailers out there, great drugstore chain, Cleveland Clinic, one of obviously the most admired uh, health care facilities. Did either call you today and say, you know what, we got to rethink our relationship? Absolutely not. We're incredibly blessed to have partners who have worked with us, have actually seen our technology. And unfortunately, in this case, we offered to bring our technology to the journal offices to show them the technology they were questioning running firsthand. Very and they correct. denied a uh, request mm -hmm. to show it to them. But Cleveland Clinic, uh, Walgreens, so many of the other partners that we have have seen our technology, they've worked with us, they've used our systems, and they understand what we're doing, and they understand that when you try to change things, uh, people react to it. All right, so let me get this straight. You offered to bring the test to the... I'm just not saying responding here, Jab, at all. And she's also adding in additional ideas that may or may not necessarily be relevant or she's actually guiding the conversation. So I'm gonna have to say direct and initiating at this point. The journal up. So presumably you would have been comfortable with say a hundred different people at the journal taking your, your test, matching them against Quest or LabCorp and you were perfectly willing to have that happen. A absolutely, we offered to bring our devices to their offices. And what did they say as a reason why they didn't want to do that? Because the story needed to get out immediately. Well, let's talk about that. Even though they've been reporting on it. They said, uh, you know, again, because first of all, it's the Wall Street Journal. This is not uh, the National Enquirer here. Uh, but they did say that they, after uh, tried, they pursued you for an interview for, for five months. Uh, you uh, declined interview requests from the journal for more than five months. Last week, the company said she would be available, but her schedule didn't allow it for the publication of this article. Uh, why not just sit down with them? I mean, what's a reputable outfit? Why not just sit down with them months ago and, and explain your side of the story? Sure, yeah. I mean, the, the journal actually had a member of their editorial board write the very first piece on Theranos, and that person, Joe Rago, came out to our lab, saw our very systems, concrete. and really got insight into our work. That was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. I published my op-ed in the journal, and um, Seems systematic. unfortunately, in the, the reporter focused on sources who we the knew in process. 2004. Screaming STJ who were, to me like crazy. Screams STJ, direct initiating control. thing about her is I think she's putting on an act. Right. I don't think she's being sincere. Which let's makes me a, think that let's put another uh, let's put another interview in there. Maybe before this one. Alright, All right, this one's from three years ago, so hopefully this is before the controversy. So let's start at the beginning. Take us back. You know, you're 19, and you have this idea. You just, you'd been working overseas because you speak Mandarin, of course. Um, <laughs> and uh, you have this idea to start a company, and you decide to drop out of school. How did that happen? What would you tell your parents? What was the... Well, first, it's, it's such a special thing for me to be here, especially with this group of people, and, and thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you, and I'm a concrete, uh, thank you. you know, I, I found what I felt like I was born to do at a really early age, and uh, I grew up in a family that was involved with disaster relief. My, my dad <laughs> um, yep. it worked for USAID, yeah. and and we had pictures all over our house of him in places like the killing fields in Cambodia trying to help people. And I thought cool. that was what I was going to do. And she's not only recalling the past, but she's talking about yep, hers. Very S-I-N-E for sure. We already know she's T-E-F-I. She's been T-E-F-I the whole time. Multiple instances. Definitely an S-J. Uh, you know, so definitely an STJ because we already have affiliative concrete systematic in place. So she's an SJ and she's pretty direct. Um, seems pretty control. 
Let's see if we can detect uh, any uh, evidence for movement. But at this point, I'm kind of leaning towards ESTJ. So let's uh, let's keep going a little bit more to verify that. Okay. Um, being a little girl in Washington, D.C., watching people there who had these incredibly good intentions and who were there to serve, but oh, sometimes... child, incredibly I, good intentions, uh, S-E-N-I. Does this person not know that the road to hell is paved with good intentions? Like, seriously. Uh, let's go again. Hey, act uh, thank you for the super chats. We love super chats. They're amazing. But remember, we only have a limited few opportunities to get in. We may only get like four or five people in. So if you keep asking us over and over again with additional super chats, probably not going to do it. And the one and the super chats that have technically paid more will end up getting priority. So I just want to make sure you folks understand that, uh, you know, as we're handling super chats, because we do this stream for like only 60 minutes, etc. Give and take about 60 minutes, uh, or potentially if all my marker colors run out that I have available here. So uh, just be aware of that. If you want yours to be like a higher priority, well, you know, then you could up the uh, the amount on your super chat to have a higher priority. So, but just be aware of that, folks, uh, as we as we get through this, because I don't want you guys to like waste your money at the same time. But just realize that you know we have a limited time for this stream tonight, as I've mentioned earlier in the stream. So, anyway, let's keep going. All right. Their intentions working within these organizations. Let's skip forward. Yeah. Lab testing is not something that is horrible and traumatic, but lab testing is something that people love doing. And that's such a different world from where we are. It's but it's something people love doing. It's yeah, like yeah, something. it's affiliative. It's also very like the, her NE is definitely optimistic. It is not pessimistic. There, ergo, this person, uh, Elizabeth Holmes, uh, is definitely hands down uh, the. Uh, um, the, uh, excuse me, the NFP STJ Quadra, and she's affiliated with Concrete Systematics, so she's an SDA, Direct Initiating Control, ergo, she is an ESTJ. There you go. Wow. ESTJ. All right, what's next on the list, Jab, for us tonight? Uh, I think we had another $5 donation from Cardi B. Sorry, for Cardi B, not from Cardi B. <laughs> Morgan Flies, $5, Cardi B. Let's see who Cardi B is. Cardi B. What a, what a year, what a year, what everything you're having. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Congrats on everything, and thanks for being here. Thank you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Cardi B, uh, where did that name come from? My name come from, you know what? My sister name is Hennessy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My sister name is Hennessy, right? So everybody used to call me Bacardi. So I always call myself Bacardi, right? And then it was my Instagram name, like Bacardi, Bacardi B. But for some reason, my Instagram keep getting deleted. And I think it was Bacardi <laughs> that had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. So I just saw it to Cardi B. So Cardi B is the jam. And I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, now everyone's calling her name now, Val. Yeah. Movement. Very movement. From, uh, from the Bronx? seem a bit responding so far she's kept the answer within the realm of the question but all right let's 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 take a look and not only that there was that awkward silence for like five seconds between it oh yeah the yeah the awkward silence you're right okay i'll put a point down for responding for that for sure mm -hmm. Ew. <laughs> uh, are you all right uh, are you uh, are you from uh, are you going home for the holidays? Bronx? Yep. Oh yeah. Yes. You are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I follow you on uh, on Twitter. It is I am Cardi B. 
and you said that you're not getting any adults uh, gifts this year for Christmas. No, because you want to know something. Everybody that I know got kids, and this is like that's just a lot of kids. So I hear the got kids out of nowhere. You know, once you start making money, everybody wants you to be the, the kids' godmother. <laughs> 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 so but uh, I, 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 you did get a beautiful gift. Uh, actually, a, you got a wedding ring from uh, your fiancé. Uh, you're engaged to uh, Offset there from Migos. You did that live? Oh, I mean, is right. Yeah. I mean, it looks gorgeous. Let me see that. Let me see that. Look at that. Ooh. Don't get too close because I ain't putting no lotion on my hand. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> it's winter time. That is S-E-N-I if I've ever heard it. Don't get too close. I haven't put lotion on my hand. The S-E barrier, S-E-N-I. Holy smokes. Wow. <laughs> so, her, her fiancé proposed to her live in front of a large audience. Hey, Chase, I hope you don't mind if I ever propose to someone that I use your audience. <laughs> All right, I, I think we'll make the arrangements for that, Mr. Jab. I, I'm sure we can make the arrangements when it comes time. You know, maybe yeah, I'll leverage the audience to do the same it. thing. I don't know. Yeah, but then, like, them, I mean, if you kill them, they won't learn nothing. You know. <laughs> never not torture Sorry. the audience, Mr. Jab. Never not torture the audience. Never not wow them either with that excessive wow factor, especially in a romance setting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I should like live stream one time while doing skydiving. I think that'd be dope. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> Pretend your shoot doesn't work. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> no, I'm not that cool. Next. Uh, okay. I, I'd like fake cry. Blah, blah, blah. All right, let's keep going. It's a winter time. I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you know? Uh, look, that is the biggest diamond I've ever seen. Did you have any idea that he was going to do it? No, I mean, you know, I always, I always, he always just told me like, I'm going to marry you. I'm going to marry you. And it's just like, mm -hmm. that's very nice. <laughs> it's the right thing to do. Movement. But I you know, I know, I know, I know he's going to give me, I know, I know he was going to give me a very expensive yeah. gift. Because he was there for my birthday. But I thought he was going to give me like a very watch or something. expensive gift, T.E. <laughs> you know what that's I the better thinking. If I, it's the very valuable gift, guys. That is associated with this incredibly valuable oh, gift. Yeah. That... And concrete AF. So Yeah. I think no, we, got ourselves, we got ourselves, got ourselves, got ourselves an ESFP. Got ourselves an ESFP. Yeah. Based on our yeah. evidence, Mr. Jab, ESFP on Cardi B. There you go. All right. Yes, sir. Yo. Mr. Washington gave us nineteen ninety nine. For Mark Zuckerberg, so there's only that awkward interview of him at Congress. <laughs> so let's. <laughs> Aiden, uh, watch Mark. these. Ah, oh, Aiden, we love you, Aiden. Like we're literally one of our favorite people around here. He's up there with Periani, you know. He's a really, really dope uh, contributor uh, to this uh, thing. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna go blue for Mr. Aiden. Blue. All right. I want to start with some of the revelations that came from the New York Times piece. Sure. Um, let's look at Russia. Did you and other leaders try to minimize Russia's role in spreading propaganda on the platform? No. Look, here, here's what happened. Responding. In 20 oh, um, man. There's no doubt that we missed uh, something really important. Right. The, the Russian uh, effort to try to have these right. coordinated information operations on Facebook and also the internet more broadly was not something that we were expecting. Elections are always a very high security um, event and we were expecting certain kinds of cyber attacks and we found them, right? The Russians were trying to hack into specific accounts and we, we told the people and we told the FBI and all that, but, but we weren't on top of um, these coordinated information operations. Coordinated so we've spent a systematic basically building up our systems and strengthening them to be able to address this. <laughs> uh, but systems. we've been very focused on this and have invested a lot in it. And anyone who wants to say learning about this, anyone we haven't been very... Low N -E, so it's S -E -N -I. ...and also that we have... Uh, I think anyone who says that we haven't made a lot of progress 
I'm, I, I just think that that's not right. I think that folks said talk a lot of progress movement because we need progress in our lives, guys. Movement need lots of progress. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, also, uh, Mr. Weiss News, will Jab ever? Will we ever see me on stream? Eventually. Eventually. I mean, I. I as soon as Jab like decides, I, I think what I need to ha what needs to happen is I need to pay Jab like actually a fair wage for once, so that he can actually afford a proper webcam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Bad Slave driver Joseph. Uh, uh, with regards to that, I plan on going into the going to the U.S. and uh, hanging out with Chase, and maybe we'll do a live stream with me at Chase's place. That'd be dope. In a couple of months. We'll invite we'll invite uh, Vexel and and some other peeps to uh, show up for that. Yeah, and you know what I reckon we could do when I come down, we'll have a uh, meetup group and we'll make it like the yearly like special meetup group where I'll come down every year. Nice. Hopefully, we'll have barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken, yeah, on paper plates, and we'll charge. Uh, yeah, <laughs> dude, don't even remind me of that. <laughs> that is so terrible. I am not the Matani. No, thank you. <laughs> I am not the Matani. And what happened at Vegas was legendary. For those of you that play EVE Online and know what I'm talking about, yeah, that was terrible. Anyway, that's, that, that was an ENTP basically screwing over his own, his own audience uh, in Vegas uh, financially. That was not cool. So anyway, continue. About transparency, though, you know, this idea that the former chief security officer wanted to publish a transparency paper and every mention of Russia was was taken out. Uh, he was encouraged not to put Russia uh, in that transparency paper. Do you regret not being more transparent at the time or not getting, you know, not being more vocal about it at the time? You know, I wish that we understood the you issues know, sooner. I wish we understood the issues sooner. Of course, of course, Mr. Movement, of course, Mr. Direct, Direct Responding Movement. I'm a literally a finisher, guys. Literally a finisher. Okay, and definitely pragmatic because it's like, you know what? I'm just going to do whatever I want anyway. I haven't mentioned anything about people whatsoever. I'm just following the system, guys. And then it's like, oh, definitely pragmatic there, yo. And let's keep going. There's also TEFI. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got, dude, I got tons of TEFI. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know, I mean, it's becoming painfully obvious this guy's an INTJ, but let's keep going just for one more stint. <laughs> In before um, the Russians tried to do these information operations in the yeah, first the place. Tried to now, do these operations. That's the well, the Russians. Well, how did you not know this? And you know, I, I think in, in in some of these cases, you know, it's a really <laughs> people were thinking. How do you not know this? In that's some like of these cases, that's like TE again. TE responding to their TI. Or how do you not know this? Um, yeah, yeah. How do you not know this? And it's low TI. So let, let's uh, let's continue. I think he's about to say an abstract statement. Right. Really big deal to come out and say that a nation state is behind something. And nation before state our behind something, that's abstract. Yeah. Ooh, that's abstract. It's okay. one reference to decision that many considered fell under the hate speech category. Um, and part of this revelation said that one of the reasons your team decided to keep it up was because they were worried about a conservative backlash. I know Facebook is under a lot of pressure from the Democrats and the Republicans, the government in general. Um, are leaders making content decisions based on appeasing political leaders? No. Look, in, in, in a lot of these Look, cases... But did they in that? No, they, they, they didn't. And, and, and I was involved in conversations. And yeah, like he started answering her question. He, she cut him off again, and then he started answering the second question. Exactly. Point he was making. Yeah, I, I, this guy's nine TJ. Let's just leave. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. It's obvious. I'm not gonna pain the audience any further. Zuck is an INTJ. There you go, folks. There you go. Zuck is an INTJ. Who's next? Who's next on the list, Jab? I got more markers. Um. Uh, Robert Parker donated nine ninety nine, but didn't. Suggestion. Uh, Leo from actualize.org is four dollars, which is the next highest. All right, 
let's see who Leo from Actualized. Is this Leo Gura? Cardi was an ESFP. All right, I think this is the guy. Hey, this is Leo for actualized.org. Oh, and dude. a good video. Blasting my face. Sorry, you know, all these YouTube videos who can't, like, keep their sound consistent, and then I start a new video. You mean and us? Because we kind of, like, resemble that remark. LOL. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Thanks. I've, I've, I've had to change the buffering for every single video we've looked at so far. Oh, not right. the buffering, the, uh... Tell you how to be attractive. From needing anyone to fulfill you in your life. All right? Okay, this is going to sound really awkward, but I'm fairly sure he's responding, and he's responding to the script he's written based on how... Yeah, I don't want to... Let's not do this one. Next, do a different video entirely. I just... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hey. Wow, he's got 800,000 subscribers. Uh, Tosh uh, Marie, this is not actually a blazer. It's actually a black denim jacket. And i literally doing a throwback to the late 80s, early 90s on this one. Next uh, clip, please. Plucks, plucks. All right, I'm on his YouTube channel. I'm just looking for what would be good. It does seem a bit abstract. Oh, uh, Robert Parker said David Lynch. Uh, oh, okay. Well, we'll do... let's do his first. All right, all right, all right, all right. We'll we'll do that one. I don't think we're going to be able to get more than David Lynch in. How deep are we? Well, yeah, we're 46 minutes in. We'll probably only get David Lynch in if we're lucky. No, no, we'll more, do two so. more. We'll commit to two more people, okay? So, you know, right. this person's like also Leo Gura Toastmasters video in the Super Chat, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Super Chat channel inside of Discord Plucks. Make sure you're keeping an eye on that one. Right, right. I don't care if Leo yeah. called himself an INTP. He probably just randomly took a human metrics test online and was like, ooh, it says I'm an INTP, and then starts claiming he's an INTP. Like, why the heck does people in this audience, like, really consider people's own opinions of what type they are even a thing, you know? I mean, sure, J.K. Rowling got it correct by claiming she was an INFJ, and sure enough, we verified that she was an INFJ. But at the end of the day, there are people who claim that they're a certain type, and we've come to realize that they weren't that type that they initially claimed. And I think uh, one of those was uh, Oprah, who thought she was an ENFJ, when in reality she was an ESFJ, for example. So not exactly ideal when it comes to considering what other people say, because quite frankly... I don't care what their opinion is. Hashtag TE critic. You know, so anyway. Yes, we will give notice, Aiden. We got your back, bro. As soon as I book the tickets, uh, I'll put out an announcement. Oh, actually, no. We'd have to figure it out. You at least have a couple of weeks. Oh, wait. Probably give you more time than that. Once the, once the tickets are booked, I'll tell you what week I'll be in... Uh, bay area yeah but seriously let's uh let's 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 keep going let's keep going i want to i want to do uh this leo person <laughs> this david lynch person uh in a moment uh Who david is lynch this? is going to play david lynch i'm okay. going to try we got david fair enough right so this guy is interviewing david lynch the guy right now okay cool. but Tell seriously these by the queensland sympathy sympathy symphony orchestra tonight so that's why we're in this musical setting but it does give me a chance david to ask about the importance of music in your films and your work as a whole um i'm very happy to be here with you all tonight good to see you i'm very happy to be here with i'm you very tonight. happy to be here tonight. 
I think that's uh, T I F E, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Let, let, let's hear some more jab before we before we make any specific judgments at this time. Uh, every element in cinema is important, and music How is one element. How systematic and of I, you to say, good sir? Or sound effects or anything. Another point is he did initiate that point. The guy just said, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yep. Initiating. And that was N I S E. So you can be in love with lots of different types of music, but um, only a very few things will marry to that picture. So it's an experiment to find those things that do that. And I also say that cinema is a lot like music. Um, I say cinema is sound and picture flowing together Very in time. Holy smoke. And, flows. Mm -hmm. and so there's different movements. Was that an abstract statement? Yes, that, that was it. That was definitely an abstract statement. He's definitely abstract. He seems pragmatic to me as well. I think we got an NT on our hands. Definitely. All right. There's different things that happen in cinema, like in music, and these transitions. Uh, from one thing to another are, are critical like they are in music. And he's These responding, for sure, responding, responding. That's another uh, pragmatic approach there as well. And uh, he was making that comparison with abstraction. Definitely, uh, I want to say S-E-N-I-T-E-F-I. That seemed T-E-F-I is for sure on that one. An NTJ, uh, we might have ourselves an NTJ, yeah, yeah. It seems like an INTJ so far, but let's keep going. You said once the best thing in the world is creating, so how do you begin the creative process? I say, um, the best thing in the world is ideas. And well, firstly, Ooh. if he did F I T E statement, the best thing in the world is ideas. Nice. Right, but if you did, if you did make that statement that you, you said you made, that's such an S E N I statement. Yep. True. Well, let's give uh, And none of us do anything without an idea, even if it's uh, you look in the cupboard and there's idea. no. That's pragmatic. You can go to the store and get statement itself. So there's right. ideas for everything, and I love uh, to try to catch ideas He's direct. and catch an idea uh, that I fall in love with. And then I know -E exactly what to do. Stay true to that idea, translate it to one medium or another. Stay true, but how difficult is it to stay true when you create? It's not really difficult. You, um, when you catch an That's idea. That's control, so control. In your mind and you feel it, and you can hear it, and you need to verify then- verify initiating versus responding, because we got a tick mark for both right now, so. And you write it down in such a way that you when you write read it- Write it down in such a way, systematic. And you hold this idea in your mind, and you stay true to that, and it guides you uh, through the process. You're an artist who has merged film, television, music, design, animation. Do you think art should be without borders, without pigeonholes? Yes. Um, yes. There's a thing called freedom. Correct. It's a and thing it's called very, very freedom. Very abstract to... of you to say, sir. Very pragmatic of you to say, good sir. But, uh, but he speaks freedom and it comes from a point of it's a value of him he's cognitive nice. he's cognitive transitioning dude like he's going between his uh his subconscious and his unconscious easily that's why it's a little bit harder to detect his interaction style between initiating and responding because he's kind of transitioning because he's giving the he's talking about ideas it seems like he's going intp shadow and then switching over to isfp artist mode to explain the process but both those types are uh, behind the scenes and then he's shooting back up into his ego uh which is still primarily direct it's also very control at the same time uh but then again as an entj uh they're triple control i'm not seeing any movement here 
but then he's going in responding mode, uh, you know, for for the sake of the interview, going back and forth between INTB and ISFB. I got to be honest, Jab, I'm thinking this guy's an ENTJ. I'm not seeing the SHL, though. You're just not seeing the it? SHL. Is that like a sore thumb with ENTJs? Yeah. Although, but the thing the parent... is, though, he's, he's so focused... Well. He's he was if he's an ISFP focused uh, ENTJ because it sounds like he is, uh, you know. But anyway, that's fine. Let's let's verify some more. Let's 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 look for look at it some more. All right. I'm just not seeing any and movement you... here. I'm just not seeing any movement. It's just it's just feels triple control to me. Um, every human being has a line they won't cross. But it's a different place for for each of us, and but you need to have freedom uh, uh, to uh, do your work. Any restrictions um, is a, a sadness, and it can kill creativity. Very ni se. Yeah. Talks about you know restricting his freedom is going to kill his creativity yeah he's definitely ntj sfp quadra for sure we know he's abstract so he's either entj or intj you know because we know he's an nt so entj intj that's really the difference here and i'm seeing direct for both because they're both ntjs okay that's fair so we know that it's just control versus movement initiating versus responding and i'm seeing control way more than movement i'm not seeing any movement from this guy at all jab none and that's why i'm being like david lynch is an entj bro you know what i'm saying yeah i mean that would make sense to me because i guess you know sometimes this personality so well, parent well, can become over but look at it this way the, the ENTP type, while it's a starter type and it's extroverted, it's also the most introverted of the extroverts because when the ENTP is uncomfortable, it hides in his ISFJ subconscious in a social situation, right? Well, here's right, the right. thing. The cognitive transitions that are available to an ENTJ in the subconscious and the unconscious, that's ISFP and INTP. Guess what, Jab? Those two types are both behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when he's trying to explain the, the, this logical system or the specific artistic process to this interviewer, he's having to go into his behind the scenes mode to walk the, uh, the interviewer through that entire process because of how systematic he is, right? And that's why I maintain this guy is an ENTJ. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. I can see that definitely. And I, I, and like I was saying earlier, you know, sometimes a parent can become overbearing and try and protect the child and force these cognitive transitions to occur. It's actually a very common thing. Parents' yes, job is, is to protect the child. Yes. If the child bad enough, the parent can become overbearing. Yep. So we have ourselves yep. an so ISFP ourselves focused ISFP. ENTJ, kind of similar to like Hans Zimmer. So. All right. Because he's an ENTJ. So now this Leo. Hey guys! Wow, that was like me talking to people loudly. Hey guys! Hey guys! It's and today we have a special episode of Actualize.org where I'm going to be interviewing Martin Ball, PhD. He's an adjunct professor in Ashland, Oregon, at the university there. Is this and the what guy? we're going to be talking about, talking about psychedelics. Sorry. Is this the Leo guy? Yeah. Okay. That guy's in, and that's the guy who's talking. Yep. Okay. Well, that guy is uh, very informative sounding to me. So. Right. And specifically, five meo because he's a big advocate of five meo and what it can do for us spiritually and for development. So I want to talk to him because he's got a lot of experience uh, uh, with. Okay. First. TE parent is like the bullshit indicator of TE parent is going off right now. I'm oh, yeah. sorry, but I just need, I just need to say like this guy is incredibly dangerous if he's telling people to take drugs to achieve enlightenment. Yeah, well, I mean, 
welcome to uh, okay. NF uh, points of view. <laughs> this guy sounds like an NF to me. No offense to the NFs who are watching tonight, but sometimes, you know, when NFs take over society, they kind of expect everyone to be communistic. And also, uh, they, they're they like, it's all about that free love, drug use kind of thing that can get really out of hand. And don't forget, politically speaking, if SJs take over, you're going to have basically a, a serious uh, authoritarian uh, situation. It's authoritarian left, basically. If you have SPs take over, it's a, a libertarian uh, right. Uh, and if you have uh, NTs take over, or no, excuse me, uh, and at, if you have NFs take over, they're going to be uh, authoritarian, uh, you know, authori wow. excuse me. Blah. Authoritarian right is SJs. Authoritarian left is NFs. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, and then, uh, and then obviously you have libertarian left and right. Uh, libertarian left is SPs, and uh, libertarian right, uh, politically speaking, is NTs. That's why you get totalitarianism when NTs are running, uh, are running the show. And it's no wonder, it's no wonder that people often claim. And I'm actually going to state this here, you know, just because I can, but. Uh, People are like, oh, why won't you ever admit that Hitler is an INFJ? No, Hitler is not an INFJ, folks. He's not an INFJ. Let me tell you something. But let me tell you this. You know, uh, I guarantee you that uh, a totalitarian state uh, is definitely, uh, you know, they started out libertarian uh, right for sure. You know, so that would basically mean the leaders of the National Socialists behind Nazi Germany kind of were actually it was an overall nt temperament culture so you folks can think on that for a little while you know what i'm saying anyway <laughs> awkward definitely not an nf so uncle chase that's, that's right on the that's the right rack. indeed let's watch this interview indeed. with all sorts of psychedelics and specifically 5meo and he's got some uh, amazing insights to share with us so uh, listen close because this could really change your life if you take into practice some of the things we're going to talk about here today. Hey, Barton, say hey. Hey. Yeah, for the worst. Initiating. Don't listen to this guy. This guy's initiating, <laughs> foreign initiating movement. This guy's a starter, hands down. He's a starter type. Mm -hmm. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on, Leo. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Uh, so I guess uh, the most direct question, the million dollar question is, can 5MEO actually be used to attain enlightenment or however you want to call it, liberation or uh, this all the guy different is words all about are... Labels, T-E-F-I. Oh, and we know he is a starter type. So if he's a starter type and T-E-F-I, this guy is automatically an ESFP or an ENFP by default. That's what we're dealing with here tonight, folks, with uh, this Leo person, ESFP or ENFP. Keep it up. Let's let's keep going. Oh, and he's very abstract. He's talking about enlightenment and drug use in that way, bro. Oh, he sounds like, oh, that's right, Jab. Chase's first vote in this guy when he first heard his voice is like, this guy's a freaking ENFP. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> well, let's hear a little bit more, even though like I'm basically already sure in my mind at this point. Right. Answer is yes, absolutely. Um, so we had a prior conversation just the other week, and one of the things that we talked about there is that I like to make a very clear and strong distinction between what I call an enlightenment experience and then what is actual enlightenment or liberation, which I would define as freedom Someone from the con. Someone to shut up, please. <laughs> The illusory nature of the ego Skip. from an enlightenment experience. Skip. Working with Skip. Skip. Psych for example, uh, but that's the primary Skip. key within it. It comes render not through, but it's sort of a oh God, one awareness guy, subject, up. light mission, the ego for that for it can that experience or even many to progress. So it's first, and you know, I've been interested in what you call non duality and enlightenment and liberation for a long time non now and actualized. Can I just speak the word duality? Re, re, affiliative, very interest-based. Yes, based on all of that for sure. 
Yep, this guy is 100% an NF. This guy is an ENFP. Leo is an ENFP. All right. Nice. Well, Jab, guess what? I have one, one. marker left. One marker one. left. So, do we want to give the opportunity for the uh, audience to potentially like out super chat the rest of the available super chats that you have to go for? Think of this as an auction, folks. Highest super chat gets the marker. You see what I'm saying? So uh, let's uh, let's see what you guys could do there. You know, if not, that's fine. What's what's the next highest one? Just in case, Mr. Jab. Um, I think it's Ethan Klein, five dollars from Peter Wiggett. Ethan Klein, huh? Well, start setting that up unless someone uh, decides to uh, get those going. Crouching Ocelot saying, ring those phones. That's like literally the best thing ever. I think we need to have like a like a, a ring those phones gif or something. I, I, I need to get that gif. Someone out there find me a gif so I control the audience with it later. That would be awesome. Right. Someone make a gif. <laughs> ring that yeah, phone. make a gif. All right, looks like uh, Ethan Klein is what it's going to be, Jeb, since no one else is uh, ringing the phone right now. So uh, let's uh, let's let's ring uh, Ethan Klein's phone. Uh, by the way, we've already done Donald Trump. He was the first episode of the How Donald to Type. Donald Trump is so. an ENTJ. Watch the first episode of the How to Type uh, Famous People uh, playlist. Um... So... Christian Hasvik gave us Robin Williams. Didn't we, about, didn't we do Robin Williams already? I think we've already done him. That's about $3, so... Okay, so Ethan Klein is still up there. Awesome. Klein is still up there. Alright, let's do Ethan Klein then. Sorry, guys. Last chance. <laughs> Once the... Is, is Taj Marie unhappy with our results? That 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 makes me sad. Taj Marie needs to be happy with us. Oh, 20 pounds. Pounds? For Eric Johnson. Sorry, that beats Ethan Klein. Eric Johnson. Who is Eric Johnson? Oh, the guitarist. Okay. All right. Eric Johnson, it is. Let's do it. All right. Let's do this. Eric Johnson, rig rundown. Yeah, let's have him talking about his rig. All right. Oh. All right. So this guy Johnson. is talking to one uh, Fender Stratocaster yeah, signature just, model. Just came out. So yeah. maybe that's a great place for us to start talking for this rig yeah, rundown. Yeah. Well, we're we're out on a Aussie that's Music Com tour with Tommy Taylor and Kyle Brock, and I'm playing these signature. Uh, these, this is the new F hole strat. This one is completely 100% stock with all the, you know, I just got it from Fender and been, been playing this one. And then, uh, then I have this white one that I, uh, I play as well. And it's all, all there, except I did put a little stronger pickup in it because I'm experimenting. I used to use a DiMarzio HS2. Okay. And so for the music comp tour, I tried to get back to that, the tone of that record. So I put a DiMarzio HS2 in this one. Oh, cool. No, you've got that guitar. Do you mind if I ask you about yeah, some equipment? Yeah, absolutely. I know yeah, you've, got, yeah. you've got a whammy bar on here right. that's to your specifications. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little shorter, a little uh, uh, well, it's, deeper Yeah, angle? it's, it's, it's uh, twisted just a little bit, kind of like the 54. Yeah. Very initiated. I don't know what they're done. And uh, right. yeah, the, the like the guy kept trying to keep asking his questions, and he's like, yeah. "Sorry, I need to finish my point, mofo." Yeah, mm -hmm. Wait a seems direct too, based on that. Most of the appointments this guitar are exactly like the solid body mm -hmm. EJ Strat, with the exception that it's a center solid wood all the way through here, and then it's hollow on each side. Okay, is that a little bit of SE and I in terms of talking about the craftsmanship? Of agreed, the guitar? agreed. SCNI for sure. Almost TIFE as well. Like, I'm seeing some TIFE in there. Absolutely. Especially with, like, correcting the guy uh, the way he did right. with his point. I need to finish my point because I have high TI. Is this guy literally an ESTP? Who knows? Keep going. Oh. On a side note, let me just point out how movement you are and not control considering how many markers of different colors and lines you've drawn on your board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh yeah, well you know, I mean, there's there's uh, these other YouTubers out there who maintain that I'm an ENTJ, right? But I mean, you know, there's no way that this could be the work, you know, of a. Uh, so. Yeah, I didn't see any uh, dirty rags in your background for you to be an ENTJ. Oh yeah, dirty rags, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, don't have any of those, right? Uh, anyway, let's keep going. Okay, so you've yeah. got your signature pickups in there as well. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And yeah. in terms of coming up with the F-Hole design, this is the first Fender Thinline Stratocaster, which is very cool. Yeah, they um, actually made a, a Japanese one, but it was made with a, it was made like the Thinline Tele with binding. Uh -huh. So this one, the whole idea I wanted to do with this one, just keep it aesthetically like a classic Strat where you had all the contours. And yeah. that was the yeah, real yeah, challenge. Yeah, how to his SE is definitely... His SE is definitely a uh, an optimistic function for sure. Very pragmatic with how he's talking about customizing. Is that he's going outside the norm specifically for the, uh, for that specific situation. Seems interest based. Let's keep going. All right. Of course. So it it has an alder top and an alder back, but uh, they the top is when the top is off they they Concrete. channel out the wood, but they block here and then they put the top back on. Right, and that's like another SE and I. He's talking about the yep. craftsmanship. Yep. And yeah, he's definitely he's definitely TIFE SE and I, which makes him NFJ STP Quadra. Like we already have identified, he's NFJ STP Quadra. And given how concrete he's been, basically this entire conversation, he's automatically an STP. So we need to figure out if he is an introverted or an extroverted variant of the STP. Uh, but both of them are direct. We have one point for initiating. So let's look at initiating versus responding and control versus movement. And then we'll have this guy in the bag. Okay. Well, when yeah. I think of the electric guitars that, uh, that, you know, I know years, it's been Stratocasters and it's also been mostly, I think, ES335. Yeah. And that's, seen. that was a whole deal with so, this. Cause I've always, for years, I thought, you know, I love this. Strat Cause it's <laughs> there's another initiating like, the interviewer tried to bring up another point, but he just like talked over him and like continued the point he wanted to initiate. Yeah, very initiating. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, for sure. And he's really, really yeah. direct. All right. Well, based on that jab, we have him down. Uh, what's this guy's name again? Um, uh, Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson. Eric is officially an ESTP, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. And I am out of markers this evening. Right. And just another point on that, how calm and collected he is, is evidence of his him being a control type. Yep. So how many types do we do tonight? Uh, we did one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. So yeah, just so you guys know that how we're going to be doing these streams from now on, we're going to be typing seven people and... Uh, Highest super chats uh, get uh, they win on who uh, we're typing basically. Uh, so that's like the format that we're running with this, and we'll be typing up to seven people per stream. We're gonna get through all of those. Uh, and tonight we have Aaliyah as ISFP, Elizabeth Holmes as ESTJ, Carter B as ESFP, the Zuck himself, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is an INTJ. Uh, that Leo guy, I don't know his full name, is an ENFP. Uh, David Lynch as an ENTJ, and this Eric Johnson character who is an ESTP. That is for tonight's episode. So thank you all for uh, joining us. Uh, we oh. would, yeah, anything you'd like to say there, Jeb? Uh, some people in the chat are saying we typed him a bit too quickly. Do you want to look at him for another couple of minutes before we end up? All right, sure. We can do that. All right, let's look at him a little bit longer. Let's verify. Okay, we'll verify. Okay, so well, I mean, it's only fair. This guy did probably pay the most out of everyone. Okay, sure. So let's ver verify the one he picked. It's all for me. And, but I Actually, do you want me to go to a different interview? Let's do a whole different interview. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do a whole different interview. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. Especially this weekend. Yeah, it's absolutely. Like party with sixteen thousand of our closest friends. I yeah, think, exactly. like that. it's it's cool. It's it's been it's been very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. So I, I saw you play all up. in an interview. Right. I mean, he does. He does. He does sound super control, such yeah. to the point that he sounds, even though he's initiating points constantly. Definitely. And when 
making a point. He doesn't allow someone to cut him off. He just talks over them. Yep. Like, that's... Like, how he's behaving there is the perfect balance between initiating and control. So he's definitely initiating and control in my eyes. Okay. I don't think I've seen him be informative. It's all been direct. So let's keep going. I a couple songs myself, but you sat in with the All-Star Band last night. It's that a big concert. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah. it was It was so cool because you did your, your songs and then the big jam at the end with yourself and Carl Verheyen and Greg Koch and uh, 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 Dweezil Ford, Zappa yeah. and, and, uh, and uh, Zappa. Andy Dweezil. Dweezil. You were up there trading eights. Yeah, absolutely. On the whole yeah, thing for, yeah. for a while. It was really, yeah. really incredible it to see. It was fun, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's it's uh, endlessly fascinating to me to listen to your music because you have a, a really, uh, of course, your lead playing. Everyone talks a lot about your lead playing, which is mm -hmm. spectacular. But the, to me, what's really interesting is the harmonic content of, mm -hmm. your, of your music, the way you approach your chords and the way you voice things. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? How did you develop that? Well, you know, I think that? it's just, Wait, so is it just me or was that question a bit abstract? The question was kind of abstract, yes, but uh, he had... See how he responds. Yeah. Because if we get a concrete answer, this guy's definitely concrete. Yeah. So I haven't seen this interview before. Let's see what answer we get. Just kind of have an open mind, and I'm always, I, I'm kind of just a student of music, and I'll always will be. So I, I just listen to all st styles of music and all types and all different people. And That's very I think originally he's, I think, he's observing so, what other people are doing and taking the pieces of what he course. likes to make his music. Fair enough. Right. So I'm going to go back a little bit because I've got to pause it when you're talking. Played piano, so a lot of my original chord thoughts were from piano mm -hmm. and and to learn guitar i had to sit down and uh, transpose the new on piano right. so it was kind of coming from that that idiom and i and I, I knew he's talking about the knowledge he had as being an absolute concrete fact and then translating it from piano to exactly guitar. it's still it's still concrete for sure, for sure. mm-hmm uh, so I, I had been trained to kind of hear it in those kind of voicings, and then I literally kind of took it and went, oh, I had to figure out these frets on the guitar off the piano. So I kind of started a lot with that. And then I think it just grew from there that I kind of liked the way that sound, because I, I like piano music. So mm -hmm. I kind of kind of lean towards that a little bit. Right, right. It's interesting that you, you lean more toward the open voicings, though, as opposed to like clusters, which are so easy to play on a piano, but not so much on a guitar. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. But I do like stuff kind of like mm -hmm. Smith used sure. to do, you know, that beautiful kind of. But uh, yeah, there's room for it all, I guess. Yeah, room yeah. For it all, all right. I see. It's a, it's a, uh, ambiguity that comes with those open chord voicings, the major versus minor. Mm -hmm. All right, this sounds like another abstract question. Let's see if he can, if he's going to risk strong, abstract, or concrete. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. And a lot of ninths that are that are in there and things that, that you're doing. Yeah. It's always interesting to me to see transcriptions where guys have tried to ascribe right. their tonality to, to some of those chords that you do. Do you think of those in those terms? Do you think of them as a progression, or are you simply hearing voice leading, or how does that work? Kind of voice leading, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then re okay what does voice leading mean i have no idea but that sounds like a concrete yeah. response to me if that's like an official term uh in uh, music creation or composing voice leading or part writing is a linear progression of individual melodic lines voices or parts and their interaction with one another to create harmonies so he's talking about almost a systematic process which seems hella concrete to me Yep. Realizing, you know, Wes Montgomery said something once. He said, you can play any note any time as long as you, the prominence of it sits in the picture. Like, is it a recessive note? Is it a dominant note? So really, Very the only limit we have ourselves. But right. within... Right. Is it this or is it that? Yeah, that's TIFE Very as good. well. So I stand by my judgment. And he's very controlled. Mm -hmm. He's not movement. And he's initiating, and he'll TI parent take over the conversation if he disagrees with the other person. And uh, be like, no, this is like my interview. I am choosing my role in the conversation. This are my thoughts. You brought me here, and you will accept the experience I'm going to give you because I'm going to obligate you as my interviewer to give me control of this situation, whether you like it or not. Damn it. Ergo, and if you try, he's an ESTP. <laughs> 
And if you try and talk, I'm going to talk over you, Mr. Interviewer. Exactly. Yeah, I think he's actually drunk in this uh, particular interview for this <laughs> one. But that's uh, just my opinion. So, all right, folks. That's it for uh, this episode tonight. Uh, we'll see you on the next stream, which I believe is Sunday for the next Q&A session. Uh, remember, uh, we have our fictional typing. Uh, that will be made available uh, to, I think it's Silver Tier for Patreon. So if you uh, want to get it on the fi fictional typing episode, uh, just get to Silver Tier with us on Patreon. And then uh, you can ask us to type uh, Sheev uh, Palpatine if you so desire. And he's like literally an INTJ anyway. So I'm just giving you that one out there uh, while we still can. Uh, but yeah, like if you want to uh, have us uh, type fictional characters, the fictional typing stream uh, is available through Patreon. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's been fantastic to have you folks here tonight. Thank you for the super chats. We really appreciate it. Uh, we got through uh, seven people and we're going to be doing seven people in the next episode as well. Anything else you want to say, Jab, before we go? Uh, yeah, thanks for coming, everyone. I think we're going to keep the format like this. I mean, we've typed one of every type now and, you know, we have uh, some very detailed typing videos. And I think at the point the community is at I think people who are, you know, have been in this community for a while have are starting to understand the process which we've gone through. Yep. And I think we can all type this fast now. So Yeah, the other thing yeah. the other thing that's important about the the format that we're doing, I want to get multiple types up here so people watching the stream can make comparisons between the people that they hear, right? Because for example, we had an ESFP and an ENFP, right? We had an INTJ and an ENTJ. And you can actually see the comparisons between these, you know, so that if people okay. get concerned, you know, oh, you know, they, well, they could be this type or whatever. You can't really make that claim. That's right, Dolph Dervish. Right. I'm totally calling you out on this one. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> so like situations like that, you know, so having multiple people available really helps the audience compare and contrast and learn more about this typing process instead of just relying on tests that are like barely 40% accurate. And if you haven't already watched uh, where I debunk the uh, MBTI uh, letter dichotomies, what are you doing? Like seriously, go watch that. Also, a new lecture came out tonight. Uh, how do social moratoriums affect the interaction styles? Keep an eye out for that. We're going to have another le uh, lecture release on uh, Thursday. That is how to social engineer ISTJs. We're getting into the introverts for social engineering. How to social engineer ISTJs comes out on Thursday. And then on Friday, we have another Patreon private premium lecture for romantic compatibility, the fourth uh, golden pair, which is ENFJs and INFPs. So if you folks want to get in on that content, that's where it is. That's where it's coming. Uh, otherwise, uh, see you folks next time. Have a good night. Yeah, have a good night, peeps. Uh, we might even have a new article coming out, so stay tuned. Yeah, I think we have a new blog post coming out as well. So see you all later.